Seems all of the prayers we made for, uh, for wind have been answered in spades. This is supposed to be the easiest passage ever. Currently in a calm with no motor. I don't know what's going on, but I don't like it. <sighs> Just let me have my moment. Welcome to our self-inflicted adventure. I'm Kiara and this is Adam. A few years ago, we walked away from our life on land to pursue travel and adventure aboard our floating home, the Millennial Falcon. Last year saw us improving ourselves and the boat whilst we tackled our first Atlantic circuit. Join us as we come full circle back to the Caribbean where we'll commence preparations for our next big challenge. Last episode on Sailing Millennial Falcon. We are pretty much ready to go now. The wind is starting to pick up a little, which is nice. He is feeling slightly under the weather. So the wind has completely dropped out to about six knots. And uh, as you can see behind, we're not that far away from the islands, which is quite annoying. You never really want to leave in a calm. Finally got another mahi. We made us work for it. Ah! So there's now lightning on all sides. The rain's picking up, which means that we're coming into the system that is causing the lightning. Whoa! Oh, oh. That was close. Southwesterlies. Can you believe that? The most bipolar. Oh, look at that wind change. <laughs> Hold on a second. That oh. day with the torrential light, oh, the yes, horrible weather, terrible knots. rains. To summarize this passage, it has been... Stupid passage. Stupid, there's no other word for it. Now, at this point, you may be thinking, why all the frustration? Well, in order to fully understand that, we first need to provide a little bit of context. The North Atlantic is dominated by what's known as the Azores High, which, as the name would suggest, is a large high pressure system that meanders around between Bermuda and the Azores, driving a steady clockwise breeze around its often elusive centre. As we move further south, the prevailing wind becomes dominated by what's known as the trades. These winds are caused by convection cycles known as Hadley cells between the low pressure systems at the hot equator and the high pressure systems north and south of there. Put these two things together and the plan becomes clear. Ride the North Atlantic high down to the trades and take the trades across the Atlantic to the Caribbean. Simple. Pilot books for the region for January, February and December which is typically crossing season, confirm this, showing that in general, you have a 70 plus percent chance of a force four, which is 11 to 16 knots from the east or the northeast. This is not what we experienced. Seems all of the prayers we made for, uh, for wind have been answered in spades because we've gone from whistling for the wind for the last five days and motoring to um, 33 knots forward of the beam on what is supposed to be a glorious downwind passage. So, uh, you know, the boat's handling it fine. We've got three reefs in and a three-quarter headsail out, and we're just sort of shrunking everything down as far as we dare so that we're ready for just about whatever comes our way. We still have room to shrink if it gets particularly bad, but fingers crossed with it won't come to that. Um, we can still break out the staysail and get rid of the headsail entirely, which will really have us ready for like 40 plus knots. But uh, it's not looking like it's going to get there, fingers crossed. Um, yeah, interesting, you know, just, it's just interesting. This is supposed to be like the milk run, like a really cruisy downwind passage. And it hasn't been the best weather window, but you know, it's, whoa, it's an interesting observation to the folks who are say, you know, they only need a downwind boat. And they're not worried about pounding to weather because they're doing the circuit, the downwind circuit, and this never happens. But tell you what, it feels like it's happening to us now, and I'm sure I'm glad for my wine glass shaped hull. Working hard or hardly working? <laughs> What? Yeah. This is such a stupid passage. Stupid, there's no other word for it. It's not been a good weather window. This Honestly, is crap. It's been the least predictable, most unreliable bunch of forecasts. It's just been a horrible week. Just nothing has been the way it should be. No. Everything's been backwards and wrong and up and down. It's just like somebody's messing with us. I was promised a, a run that was like 
six months old do this run? Like it's fine, it's easy. I think I just need to turn the engine on. This is ridiculous. Today is a day when I just want, you know when you sometimes just want to like magic yourself away? I just want one day in a nice flat hotel room today. Just today, so far. Just had to turn the engine on to point in any, get the boat to point in any direction. What's going on with the wind? Uh, this morning we had southwesterlies. Can you believe that? 30, 37 knots southwesterly in the middle of the trade belt. That's subsided and then almost all at once it just clocked around and picked back up from the northeast. Unfortunately, what's happened is now the seas are all confused and we've got a wind driven tide going against, sorry, wind driven swell from this morning going against now the prevailing. Yeah, it's just a mess. Anyway, it's not like untenable, it's just frustrating that we're reefed down for 37 knots and now we've just suddenly got crazy rolly swell, not enough canvas up and we're, it's come from the other beam. It's okay, we just need a minute, we need 20 minutes, I'll just tidy up, get our ducks back in a row, then we'll shake out some canvas, set the boat up for this tack, and that should be how it is for the rest of the day. I am not having a good day. It has just been the most bipolar five, six days of just ever. We've had, it's just never quite enough and all, all, always too much. Just wrestled with the spinnaker for like half an hour because I didn't want to put the motor on because we're not even halfway and we're burning through heaps of diesel. Suddenly it's gone from like a perfect 10 knots to three and now we can't even hold the spinnaker. And as soon as I put this away, you bet your ass it'll pipe up to like 12. Just enough to make me feel bad about motoring. Then I'll turn the motor off and it'll go back to 8. Which is not enough to keep the sails full and the flapping will recommence. Ah! Where are my trades? This is supposed to be the easiest passage ever. Yes, I can hear you all now in the comments section. Oh, stop whinging. At least you're out sailing. <sighs> Just let me have my moment. We tried everything. There's no getting away from it. We either bob around out here like idiots or we lower the iron topsails and get some stability back in our lives. I don't know what else to do. Motor's on, probably gonna be like that for the rest of the day. Can you just switch straight away to the internal one? Yep, try again. All right, so the sun's still setting and we have been motoring all day, but you'll notice that the motor is off right now. Um, for some reason we're drawing power when we're motoring. It's not, that shouldn't be the case. Um, so Adam's just downstairs, it looks at this stage, like, actually, I'll just get him to report to you, really. Currently in a calm, there's no motor. So we tried to switch out the charge controller for the old, the old one. And uh, it started up, came to life, and then the engine stopped. And I'm not really sure why. We tried it again, and it stopped again. And then we, so we thought obviously something was wrong with the charge controller or the wiring or I don't know. So then we put the old one back in, the faulty one, but uh, well, basically we bypassed it. We bridged it so that it running, it ran off the internal controller for the alternator. And uh, the engine shut off. It started and then it shut off again and we tried again and, and it came good. We're charging now, we're running, but I don't know why. There's no pattern there, so I don't like... It shut itself off three times with three different controllers. And even the bad, the faulty controller came back to life. 
I don't know what's going on, but I don't like it. I think it's highly unlikely that the charge controller problem is causing the engine to shut off in this way. As yet, this issue is unresolved. My leading candidates are a clogged up fuel filter or a temperature spike in the engine that typically follows a quick shutdown after prolonged motoring. This might have caused the engine to run rough and shut down when we tried to restart it until such time as the temperature returned to normal. Let me know in the comments section below what you think might be causing this problem. All right guys, today is the day. Today is the day when we have received a semi-okay forecast that doesn't tell us to go hundreds of miles out of our way. And we finally received a forecast that pretty much tells us to just go straight towards St. Martin. Um, and along with that forecast, we've had about 13 knots of consistent wind from the northeast. Oh, look at that wind changed. <laughs> Hold on a second. Okay, it's still all right. It's still okay. We're still on track. Um, we're currently wing on wing, which is absolutely lovely. Um, we've just got a message from another boat that's out here who have caught their fourth mahi. So we really, really need to up our game. But the sun's shining, only a few clouds. Today is the day when things start to turn around. It's gonna be a good day. You heard it here first. Hey babe, what day is it? Tuesday. No, it's the day that things are turning around. Fish! No, I just fucking fell. I saw it coming. Woo! Whoa. Fish! Oh, okay. Oh, 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 we can't slow down. I know, I know. Oh, no. It might even be gone. I think it had a go at it and it gave up. Oh, man, I saw that. I saw it jump. I was like, what is that? And then it went for the lure and the Ooh. lure went boing. I think it's gone. Damn! Bloody hell, something had a real go at this. Downside to being wing on wing. Can't slow down. Adam has just passed up our secret ammo for catching more fish. Moldy bread. Um, yeah, we obviously thought we we're gonna go through a lot more toast than we did. This will just feed them though. This will create a frenzy. It's been a bit of a frenzy of fish actually, all around us, flying fish going everywhere. Um, bigger fish in the water, kind of swimming next to us in the water, going down the waves, almost like what dolphins do. So the whole morning we've been surrounded by plenty of fish around us. Unfortunately, they've all been the kind of fish which are a little bit too small to eat and which would probably look at our lure as friends rather than something to eat. Um, so there are fish around, we just need to get the big fish to find these little fish and then we're in. Bread is biodegradable, it is okay to go in the water when you're this far out as well, even the US Coast Guard approves it. You know what you're gonna do, you're gonna get a bar, you're gonna get a hit on your lure soon and you're gonna reel in a piece of bread. <laughs> <laughs> you know Look, that? I caught my own bread! You know when you see like one tiny leaf of sargasso and it just happens to find its way onto your hook, you know, like 200 feet yes. behind us, one measly single hook and the bloody weed finds its way on the hook. For the record, she doesn't actually think that the bread is going to attract fish. <laughs> just for the record. We just, uh, yeah, it's mouldy. It's time to go. Yeah. See if I can get away with spraying from the zone. Ooh, I the don't know. Knows, if you're in the zone, it behaves. If the boat knows if you're in this box, but if you come out of this box, something will change that brings you back to the box. So I'm gonna do it. Oh, I don't know babe, that Rolling was a one dice. meter. I'm gonna even put my feet up. <laughs> Wait for it. Everything's just gonna go. Seems suspiciously like it's working. Don't move, don't breathe, don't touch anything. Just freeze. Don't adjust, because we're finally sailing. Those of you who've been watching for some time and have forgotten what it's like to be sailing, that's what this is. 
It's this sport where you know you buy a boat. Um, and, I didn't uh, know this, but apparently with the wind. The sails work some other way than just skull dragging you downwind in like a mild breeze. <laughs> apparently, if you get 12 to 15 knots forward of the beam, you can actually go quite fast. <laughs> this is like. Oh, I don't think we've seen six knots since that oh. day with the torrential like, oh, the yeah, horrible since weather, terrible rain. To summarise oh. this passage, it has been extreme. You know what this is? What? This is the Mediterranean going, F you guys, you ran away from me and I'm going <laughs> to chase you. What do they say about the Mediterranean? It's either, it's either all or nothing. All or nothing, and it's always in the wrong direction. Yep. That's exactly how I would categorise this passage. Oh, 37 so knots or 8 knots. That's your choice. Yes. And guess yes. what? You've got to be driven south if you want to get any yeah. kind of sailing done. It's like, when huh, you're going north. You think you can leave Europe without getting a taste of me? That's what it is. The Mediterranean chasing us. <laughs> like, ah. you think you can avoid motoring by sailing across oceans? Ha ha ha. Trade wins, hold my drink. I'm in charge this month. <laughs> it's like we specifically waited until January because that's when, well, eight, most people leave in November. Sorry, the Ark leaves in November, which is like pretty much still hurricane season, the end of. So trade winds really kind of settle in around about January, February. And we're like, you know what, we'll wait until then. We'll wait till the good months. No, no. Terrible. Honestly, it, I, I've been beating myself up because I'm like, oh, we shouldn't have left, we shouldn't have left. But the, the forecast looked good, it really did. And it there's did. so many other boats singing the same song. Yeah. It just, yeah, this is what it is. You really. went to know.